So today, uh, I'll be speaking about creating the diverse dystopian cyberpunk 2077 Night City and the importance of the art bible in the project. So my name is Michał Jankiewski. Uh, I was working on, uh, I started working in the CD Projekt Red uh, on Witcher genre, so Witcher, Witcher White Hunt and both uh, expansion packs, and then I moved to the Cyberpunk 2077. So for the project of Cyberpunk, we set up ourselves an ambitious goals. We, uh, we wanted to have a dystopian universe, create a new project in the dystopian universe of the cy cy uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, we, we need to move from our comfort zone, uh, uh, the Witcher, and we, we wanted to go bigger, much bigger, like an RPG, but on the, on the steroids, uh, giving a different, a better immersion for the player, uh, uh, setting up a new design goals and style. So let's uh, dig in a little bit of a style, a little bit of a style like from the beginning. Uh, each one of these elements, these this graphics, are an icon, are a pop, col uh, pop culture uh, icon. We have a Darth Vader, we have a Charlie Chaplin, and we have a bull up Arab, sorry guys. Uh, it is connecting the audience. The designs are connecting to the audience. We are selling the base idea. We are having the, the, all, all of them got the really clear vision and they are visible. They are uh, presenting a good aesthetics and they are dealing with the good semantics. What, what is the best, uh, one of the best uh, industrial design icons? We can say it is like a Coca Cola bottle. It is very uh, and identifiable. You see the bottle. The bottle. The design of the bottle doesn't change with the with the years uh, from the years that that was passed. And it got the. Uh, it, we can identify it with the color. So we have a red color. We have the uh, iconic shape. We have the logo and the pattern, the wave that is uh, that is going around the the bottle itself. Next, we have. When I will say. Uh, scooter, probably uh, most of you will think about that kind of a shape. It's, it's, it's very uh, identifiable and memorable. It is a Zippy classic Italian uh, means of transport. It is, you can identify it with the carefree, charming Italian countryside. And it's like blending a new style with the old style. It is, it didn't change for years. Uh, and we can identify that like, a, like the old uh, Mustang cars. Most of us, when we are looking at the cars that they are uh, right now, the new designs of the Mustang cars, they all are basing on the uh, 1967, 1965 uh, Ford Mustangs. So all of this, this, these elements uh, were based on the good design. Uh, Dieter Rams, a German uh, industrial designer, uh, he was creating uh, products for the Brown. Uh, he said, good designs, uh, uh, long are long lasting. So, uh, what are the principles? What are the uh, principles of the good design? First, we need to have, uh, we need to set up the foundation for the project. What, are, what is the the purpose of the project? What is the audience for the project itself? Next, we uh, we need to ensure the consistency. So, we can, we have to illustrate the subject matter. We have to uh, create the design practices. And align expectation. Align expectations is very important when it comes to creating the project, that each one of the artists, each one of the people that, that are working on the project, they know how to create it. So artists can work freely by, by themselves. And it is uh, the art bible or the book, uh, it is uh, communicating the aesthetic intents. So it is setting up the clarity of the style. Uh, of the project itself. And of course, it is lasting long. So uh, the art bible for the games, uh, for movies, for comic books, it, is, it needs a little bit more uh, to it. So what, what, what do we need? We have to set up the rules and laws uh, that define the world. Uh, for example, uh, is it, are, we, uh, are we able to use magic? Is it some kind of a different gravity going on over there or something, something else? And it needs to have uh, set up a good history and the culture. So creating a really good narrative uh, for the project itself. Next, we need to set up the environment. So if, uh, if the project uh, is in space, underwater, it is in the skies or in the, even on the other planet. Next is uh, defining the design and the style. Some of the project, 
uh, can based on cartoon style, some a little bit stylized. Is it like medieval, or is it, uh, or is, is it is it set up in the sci-fi universe? Then next uh, ingredient that we need to put in are the inhabitants. So people living there. What are their occupation? What are they? What are they, what are they uh, doing? This is something for the open world guys that they really love to uh, take care of. Next, to put a little bit more diversity in the in the uh, in the project, we need to have some kind of enemies, rivals, and the or like a really visible antagonist. Last but not least, what kind of uh, means of tr transportation the people will be using over there? <coughs> and what kind of <coughs> a landscape and we will have there. <coughs> so there are a couple of projects, many projects, that they have really uh, good established <coughs> and strong history. For example, we have Bioshock. Strong history based on, based on the novel of Atlas Struggled, uh, dystopian underwater city of rapture. Atmospheric uh, with the Art Deco style, uh, very memorable. And the music, the audio, uh, it is like ba uh, it is clash of the decadence, uh, m meeting devastations. And next, we have the the Last of Us 2. Everybody, most of you guys, uh, were playing uh, this game. So we have the post-apocalyptic uh, United States, decimated, almost decimated, uh, to uh, totally human race. We have two protagonists uh, uh, exploring and traveling uh, across the remains of the big cities. It is very recognizable. Even the silhouettes of the characters themselves, when somebody will be, will be sketching them, they will be very uh, recognizable. Uh, next, probably most of you, when I will say clicker, that will be in your head, like this clicking sound and this, that kind of uneasiness, uh, and that the monster will, uh, will catch you. It's like, uh, really hor uh, horror experience. And talking about the monsters, I don't have to introduce this guy, Gerard of Rivia, the Witcher. Here we had the uh, here we have we had the story based on Sapkowski books. Very strong protagonist, uh, medieval medieval fantasy world uh, with a political plot, mysticism, and magic. Uh, I would I would not be uh, giving a lot of information regarding uh, regarding this project, but I would like to have uh, to, uh, to give you a glimpse on what kind of elements we were working during the Witcher 3 and what kind of art Bible we are using. So here we have uh, mood boards, mood boards that were placed all over the the, uh, the company, even though when you are just uh, uh, just getting up from your seat and going for a coffee, that all of them were uh, were hanging on the walls and you can just go to them and we had the conversation regarding what kind of stuff are there. So this is like a, like a collection of the cinematics, the illustrations and famous pa uh, paintings showing the, uh, and it is visible that the art director uh, created the uh, visible contrast between three of them. We have No Man's Land uh, with, uh, with red color, uh, the land uh, consumed by war. We have Skellige with cold, uneasy and dangerous to live in. Most teal blues are uh, over there the main the main color, and then we have a Novigrad, rich, full of color, cloudless sky, and uh, gold was the main uh, main uh, color gu guiding this uh, this area. And uh, in here, the political plot underneath was very very important uh, and driving this area. Uh, next, I was speaking about the uh, the, the weather. Uh, so we have here. Uh, representation of the three types of the weather. We have the uh, no man's land, when dark red skies, uh, full of mysticism and magic. We have uh, Skellige, dark hurricane, uh, hurricane winds. It's very cold and, and wet. Next, Novigrad, sunny, peaceful, with a light breeze. And all of this, uh, these uh, um, mood boards, uh, we managed to create the beautiful word of
So we did the project and right now we need to pack our bags and move to the other one. Yeah, uh, new challenges, yeah, new project, new world and new engine. So what kind of design changes we need to, uh, uh, to have when it comes to the moving from the uh, medieval times to the dystopian, uh, dystopian world of the cyberpunk? We had to move first, the most important, from the third person camera to the first person camera. We need to get the, uh, our minds from medieval world, so simple, uh, simple assembled uh, uh, castles from the rocks, uh, and makeshift structures created from poor wood uh, to the mass produce modules of the, uh, uh, of the of the huge huge nice city we need to uh, create change the, uh, for creation the forest paths into the uh, tarmac uh, for tarmac highways and we need to change the natural forest for the night city city jungle we have the uh, uh, the uh, okay let's go so uh, what is the, what the, the main uh, disadvantage was the moving all of us from the uh, third person camera to the first person camera. It's like a double edged so, so, sword because uh, we have the greater immersion when it comes to the first person players closer to the uh, to the object. It, uh, it, it is we can sell that it, he is overwhelmed uh, with the monolithic uh, monolithic glass uh, buildings. Uh, but we need to adjust the, how, we, uh, how we are creating materials, how we are creating the compositions, and how we are uh, uh, creating uh, uh, assets, because the textile density was different than the ones that we had, uh, we had earlier inside of the, uh, the Witcher. So uh, we need to create ourselves a book that will be uh, setting us, all of us, on the, on the same uh, page. So. Let's talk about the uh, cyberpunk art bible. And from the genesis of the, the cyberpunk art, uh, art bible, Mike Ponsmin's manual, the pen, pen and paper uh, rule books, set up ourselves a, a, a base for us, set up, set up for ourselves the uh, base history. We had the rules that were, uh, that were, that were created by him. Uh, we, we, we knew what kind of a mood the world will uh, will be, and we knew that we, we knew what kind of people will be living there. But still, that was the Cyberpunk 2020, and we need to to uh, close the gap between the Cyberpunk 2020 and Cyberpunk 2077, building our own CD Projekt Red vision of the dystopian future. Most of us, when it comes to the Cyberpunk, uh, they were referring to Ghost in the Shell, uh, Judge Dredd, uh, or my favorite, uh, Blade Runner. Yeah, of course, you wouldn't be wrong. All of them, they are in the cyber, cyberpunk. Uh, uh, you, uh, they could be identified as a cyberpunk, but we need to have something new. They could be like a reference, but we need to have something even more interesting and with our own identity. Uh, our three, three directors, Lucian Wienczek, Paweł Milinczuk, Oras, uh, and uh, Kuba Knapik, uh, they created uh, for us uh, four pillars uh, of uh, styles that were ruling uh, or ruling our world. We have kitsch, entropism, neo-military, and neo-kitsch. Each one of them are conveying a little bit different story. Each one of them uh, are presenting inhabitants, and each one of them they are based on the contrast. Uh, of course, they were involving over time when we uh, when we are creating the the project itself. But it's like a clash, like you see uh, on the left, you have the vibrant colors, and on the right, uh, uh, in the neo military, you have a dark, cold, and minimalistic designs. But we went to create a good uh, art bible. We went a little bit further. Uh, the directors uh, set up all of the styles on the uh, history. Of the of the night city itself. So, like you see, when Richard uh, uh, Knight created the night city, it was based on the kitsch, uh, very colorful uh, and and uh, and very soft. Then uh, corporate world uh, happened, and uh, people were 
thinking about not thinking only about the pleasures, they were thinking about uh, simplicity. So the entropy was born. Next, when the uh, corporations are getting up again, the neo-militarism uh, uh, was born. Last but not least, the neo-kitsch, the last decadent neo-kitsch, the style of the elite uh, was born in uh, 2070. Uh, we want to have deeper story and we want to have deeper environments. That's why all of the uh, styles were distributed uh, along the city, inside of the city. Like you see, we have the entropies that the huge influence was on the suburbs. We have the inner and outer, outer and inner city where we had the mix of kitsch, entropism and neo-military. Neo-military had, had been ruling the city center uh, and the neo-kitsch on the uh, uh, vast uh, hills of, of uh, green hills uh, of North Oak uh, was distributed. So uh, next, uh, we placed the, uh, the cyberpunk on the map. So we had the west coast of the United States, California, burning sun, acid rains, and uh, the, uh, the city was like, was the, uh, in the dystopian future, mm, uh, multicultural uh, metropolis. So when it comes to the art Bible, we didn't have only these nice posters. We had designs that were uh, connected to it. Here, example. Uh, in each one of these styles, we, had the, this, uh, we have the uh, visible patterns, how they are distributed, what kind of proportions are between the patterns, what kind of materials uh, uh, they, all of the styles uh, will be using. So we have plastic, uh, plastic in the uh, in the kitchen. We had the entropies, most like mostly peeling paint, uh, corrugated steel. Uh, inside of the neo military, we had the oxidized uh, metals, glass, tempered glass, and concrete. Inside of the now now military uh, sorry inside of the now kitchen there were natural materials like wood wood was very expensive back then so it was like wood gold and uh, the patterns were more uh, natural so I would like to create uh, how uh, the styles were used inside of the architecture what kind of elements they were they were representing when it comes to the architecture first. Uh, they were distributed all along the, the city, like, like, like I was showing on the, on the uh, slides. And uh, each one of the styles themselves was representing like the words of power. So for example, kitsch was a style of a substance, uh, plastic large, uh, large surfaces, uh, rounded, rounded edges, soft materials. Uh, the paneling was, uh, was uh, was very fitting, but with the, with, with the larger gaps in, in, in between them. Uh, they were, uh, inside of the kitsch, we were using uh, vibrant colors, and the style uh, is especially visible in the uh, Japan town and Little China district. Next, we have the entropies. Entropies is necessity, necessity over style. Uh, every, every type of the electronics that was supporting the buildings themselves was scattered around the building. So basically, somebody will, will be thinking, okay, more cables, more cyberpunk. This is what, uh, what was uh, inside of the entropy, entropy style. Uh, we had the peeling paint. Uh, the style was dirty uh, when it comes to the uh, decorations, of course. Uh, we have the sim simple patterns. The patterns were uh, very um, retro. Uh, most of the, uh, it, is, it is visible in the North Industrial, Arroyo, and Glen. Sorry, next we have the uh, neo-military, substance of a style. Heavy uh, geometrical shapes, almost bunker-like, oxidized metal, aluminum, uh, and temp tempered glass was building this. Patterns are uh, not that visible. They are uh, really distinct and only, uh, only covering the functional elements inside of this, uh, this style. Uh, mostly visible in the city center. Next, neo-kitch, substance of a style. Style of the rich. Uh, 
natural materials, sophisticated patterns, minimalistic design, uh, wooden elements that uh, with the with the, uh, with a little adjustments uh, from the elegant uh, gold, and mostly visible on Nortok and villas on the top of the uh, uh, top of the skyscraper, skyscrapers. Here, I would like to present uh, you uh, our first iterations, first um, brainstorming on the modules that will be created uh, uh, for the city itself. We, we see here uh, on the left side, on the left side, we see the influence of the uh, Asian culture, very densely, uh, uh, very dense, uh, uh, very dense buildings. We see the uh, the amount of colors and the amount of uh, uh, materials that we were testing. That was the first iteration of it. We wanted to create the uh, uh, how the styles would look like. We wanted to create. Uh, we wanted to check how this city skyline will look like. Uh, in here, uh, we uh, the levels of the society was visible too. On the bottom, the, the most poorest one, and going up the richest, uh, richest inhabitants uh, uh, were uh, visible. Uh, we were struggling how to create the uh, really believable structures that will be climbing into the, into the sky. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to have like a framing, framing that would be believable and that would be basing uh, all of the uh, buildings uh, sticked on uh, one another. Next, we have the uh, examples for the first iteration with the uh, neo-military neo designs. Of course, it was evolving. Like you see, the characteristic yellow color, uh, windows were over here on the first iteration, really visible. Uh, with, the next iter uh, with the next steps, we, were, uh, we started to cover the, the, the windows themselves and the buildings were starting to look more like a bunkers. To create all of these elements, we need to have a metric system. It is, it is like a pillar for the uh, third-person uh, uh, camera uh, game. Uh, we set up the metrics for the buildings, uh, for the floors, uh, dimensions for uh, windows, and even the tables and the little glass that, that the NPC was, uh, was picking. Each one of the elements need to have their own metrics, and this uh, this step uh, provides us the, uh, the base for building the, the city itself, even the streets uh, and the dimensions in between the buildings. Uh, with all of these informations, we started working on the, uh, on the city silhouettes. How we can uh, convey all of the information that we had about the styles to sell the, uh, the type of the styles where they are uh, around the city. So uh, each district had, had its own uh, definition. For example, city center was, was more square when it comes to the uh, vistas uh, looking from the far, far away. When it comes to the Watson, we had the rhythmically uh, uh, placed buildings, glass, glass buildings, with the spiky antennas uh, go, uh, shooting into the air. Uh, with Arroyo, we had the burning, uh, burning chimneys and Norco green grass with villas uh, sticking stick, uh, onto it. Each one of them had a different balance. Each one of them had a, had a different width. From looking from the badlands, uh, you know exactly which district is where. Uh, additionally, each one of the district and each one of the sub-district received a different, uh, a different uh, color scheme. That was very uh, identifiable, and uh, it was visible when you were crossing the uh, the district uh, lines. So it was visible on the posts, uh, on the uh, lanes of the of the streets, uh, on the lamps, and on the colors of the uh, uh, streets uh, themselves. With even changing the materials of the street. Next. Uh, Let's talk about the styles inside of the city. I would uh, compare uh, three, uh, the three districts. I will compare city center, Japantown, and Kabuki. 
So let's start with the city center. It was heavily influenced by the United States metropolis. Uh, clean, sleek glass uh, uh, metal surfaces, uh, massive brutalistic neo-military buildings that was shooting uh, into the air, uh, divided by canyons uh, of, uh, of fast highways, uh, wide alleys. Uh, it is very overwhelming place here. It was the place where the uh, corporations uh, showed their power. It, uh, it was influenced by uh, Sidmit and Akira, but with, with our own uh, cyberpunk twist. Each one of the districts had the landmark. Inside of the uh, city center, the landmark was Corpo Plaza. Like, it was like a crown jewel of the, uh, of the night city itself. On the Corpo Plaza, we had the two forces, Arasaka and Militech, two opposing, standing in uh, one, one uh, uh, in front of uh, the other. Uh, both of them, the design of the buildings was neo-military. Cold, sharp lines, uh, not a lot of patterns, uh, bunker-like. But you see the differences. You see the slick lines of the Arasaka, uh, very new, modern, and the designs of the Militech itself, it was very vertical lines, visible windows, almost like a um, old retro 90s, uh, uh, 80s, uh, I would say Microsoft. And, so, and uh, Arasaka would be, for me, like Sony design. Let's move to the Japan town. We had the different uh, influence over here, more of the Asian culture. Uh, we have we had the monumental shanty like skyscrapers, small footprint, uh, all uh, covered with the neons and glamour. We had the mix of the plastic kitschy uh, kitsch elements and the metal covers from the uh, from the um, from other uh, from other uh, designs. Uh, shrines and holographic lanterns were visible over here. Graffitis, uh, it was uh, it was everyday uh, element that surrounds the Japan town uh, inhabitants. Here we have the visible landmark of the Japan town itself, the whole Japan town wall. Like you see exactly the vertical uh, buildings shooting into the air. Next, let, let's move to the Kabuki. Kabuki is necessity over style. Very atmospheric and mystic, heavily influenced by Hong Kong, Tokyo, and other Asian, Asian cultures. Crowded uh, with the tight maze streets, overshadowed by other districts, uh, with a really unique feeling into it. Small architectures stuck on, uh, on one another, connected with the web of, uh, of mood on the of the web uh, bridges on the multiple levels. Different experience, this different immersion when uh, uh, opposed to the uh, city center. Mostly entropism and the kitsch was visible over here. The landmark of this, uh, this district is a kabuki market. Home for the shady business of the gangs inside of the Kabuki. You could buy everything, everything over here, augmented elements and not only this. Four styles give it for us an amazing uh, support for the narrative and uh, creating a narrative driven and memorable locations. We could show cl clearly the contrast between the layers of society over here. Uh, it was easy having the art bible to commun com communicate with other teams uh, uh, and get us moving between these four pillars of the uh, of the designs so how the four styles of the uh, were looking inside of the uh, interiors here kitsch like like we said uh, before plastic paneling soft cushions really nicely uh, designed uh, patterns Next, we had the uh, dirty uh, square shapes uh, and, and metal concrete uh, with the scratched walls of the entropy. 
Inside of the neo-military, we had a cold, metal, corporate, but stylish, minimalistic designs with not a lot of patterns visible. Next is neo kitsch minimalistic, clean, full of organic shapes and very modern. But that was just like a normal design of the normal um, inhabitants, the apartments. But we moved a little bit further. This, uh, this character, Mr. Fingers, we want to, uh, to give him more of the reflect, uh, inside of the locations, we want to reflect his personality, emphasize him, show him the individualism uh, uh, of, of this person. So we designed from the beginning the assets uh, to, uh, for his, to support him. Uh, then we moved for the design of the location itself. First, you are moving uh, with, uh, inside of the uh, entropy uh, house, then moving in, into the, his, uh, his apartment. Uh, we are entering the flat and we have neo kitsch with plastic flamboyant eclectic style decorations. Kitsch here was pushed into the limits. So that was showing that we, uh, we were caring about the designs and the decorations were placed with care, each one of them supporting the, uh, the, the inhabitant that was inside of the location. When it comes to the designing of the elements, all of them had the, had, have had the, the same approach. Each one of them was designed in different styles. Remember, this is the first person camera, so everything is visible up close. Last but not least, I would like to uh, present to you Mega Building. Mega Building is a structure like an icon. It is a landmark of the Stopion future. With this uh, uh, early, with this early neo-military uh, neo style, multi-level uh, brutalistic structure, living and breathing monument. Uh, it was the, the mega buildings were radiating from the from the crown jewel of the night city, the Corpo Plaza. It was dominating. Uh, they were dominating the uh, the outskirts and the city skyline. Uh, I could create a separate uh, presentation about what kind of stuff are uh, are uh, inside of these uh, buildings and underneath them. Uh, Let's talk about the artist being an art director. It was very important for us. So all of the information that we had inside of the art Bible was very uh, informative. And we want, for me as a lead, it was very important to, uh, with the contacts with the art director, with the team members, with other teams, so we could pick up the proper style for the, for the uh, narration, for the quest, uh, it was crucial for the context with the other companies, the outsourced companies. We had, uh, inside of uh, CD Project, we have very talented uh, people working. Uh, all of them, by day by day, they, they are their own art directors. They are sharing the best practices. Uh, so the art Bible was like a decalogue for them. They knew exactly what kind of elements we, we need to create inside of the, uh, the project itself and they were giving a little bit of a twist for, uh, uh, from, from themselves. Each area uh, inside of our, uh, our world was handcrafted and they were bringing the novelty basing on the, uh, uh, on the, uh, on the um, rules that were set up inside of the uh, art Bible itself. Even little decorations were placed uh, uh, with care. So we had the chance for, uh, to see how they are inspired by Judge Dredd, Ghost in the Shell, Akira and Blade Runner, and give it the twist of, the, uh, for, uh, of, their, of their own. Here is a small example of what kind of stuff we created. Maybe it would. 
all of this was created by, the, uh, uh, by collaboration inside of the team. They were sharing the best practices. Uh, we, we wanted to give, uh, give the artists the ability to have a creative mess, uh, to have the ability to create something new, something fresh, something that, will nev that was never uh, seen before. So each one of them was working closely with other teams. Um, we didn't have to give them a lot of feedback when it comes to uh, some of the locations. They were just pleased to work on, uh, on them by themselves. Last but not least, it's like, why everything is so yellow? We were speaking about the, uh, the Coca-Cola. The yellow color is pretty much the same thing. It is conveying the, the information. It is simple to remember. Uh, it, is, it is getting off from the thinking about the, the cyberpunk. Most of the people, when they are thinking about the cyberpunk, they, they think uh, it is like a red color, a little bit of blues. Uh, but right now, we want to have something new, something fresh. That's why it, we picked the yellow color. It is, uh, it is like new. It is... Uh, com uh, it is um, it is like California style. Okay. What is the takeaways from 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 this talk and when it comes to the uh, art bible itself? So, art bible is a key key of the communication. So we are uh, selling uh, the information uh, and aligning all of the expectation when it comes to the project itself. It is easy to use uh, and easy to. Uh, to get the everyone on the same page when it comes uh, comes to the project, it is inspiring. It is informing. It is evolving over time, and the art bible is set, setting up the bar for the uh, for the for the whole project and for the quality. Uh, I would like to thank all of the uh, all of the team uh, in, uh, in this, uh, that were building the cyberpunk. Guys, you rock! <laughs> thank you very much, and please join us. <laughs>